when we talk about the work of Congress, we usually think of the people who are elected to the House and Senate. But behind every single member of Congress is a group of staffers who do a lot of the work keeping our government and our democracy functioning. They research and draft complex laws, respond to constituents' needs, and do so much more. We don't usually hear much from congressional staffers because they do so much of their work completely behind the scenes and out of public view. But that seems to be changing. An Instagram account called Dear White Staffers is calling attention to allegations by congressional staffers about low pay, hostile work environments, and racial and gender discrimination. The account is anonymous, and we have not verified the authenticity of the posts. But this comes at a time when congressional staffers have announced a plan to organize a union. Union organizers say that working conditions for congressional staff vary from one office to another. But one problem in particular for junior staffers appears to be they're not making enough money. They're, they're talking about low pay. Roughly one out of every eight congressional staffers makes less than a subsistence wage, according to one report. And one problem with the low pay is a failure to recruit people of color who can't work for just a little bit of money. Only about 3% of top Senate staffers are black and fewer than 4% are Latinx. Joining us now, Kurt Bardella. He's a former Republican congressional aide and is now an advisor to the DNC. Also with us, Sir Michael Singleton, a political analyst. Kurt, I'll start with you. Why is this happening now that congressional staffers are actually coming out in public and speaking out and trying to form a union? Does it have anything to do at all with the political polarization in Congress or the insurrection? What, what is this about? I think it's a lot about a lot of things, really, Zerlina. I mean, you have the combination of the toxic political environment. You have, after January 6th, staffers feeling, and rightfully so, like they were in harm's way, and there's no protection for them. We have seen time again. I worked on the Hill for the better part of a decade, and, and I've heard and seen firsthand so many examples and stories of abuse of power, of workplace harassment, of disrespect, of just no actual standard that's uniform across the halls of Congress. And you have a bunch of people who are asked to work long hours for not enough money and no security, no recourse to actually take an issue of legitimate workplace harassment anywhere. Uh, it, Capitol Hill's been a fiefdom that's been run for so long by so few in power. And I think enough is enough. And we're seeing now, whether it's in the halls of NBC, whether it's the, sta the, the staffers at the DCCC, we're seeing a real reckoning happen in political and media institutions for workplace unionization. Sure, Michael, why do you think there's such a lack of diversity among congressional staff? Those numbers are abysmal. I mean, no, they are abysmal, and, and this is a problem on the Republican side and the Democratic side. But what surprises me, I will say, outside of black members, Zerlina, it surprises me that so many white members who are Democrats don't have a lot of people of color representing the districts that they represent, particularly when people of color vote overwhelmingly, particularly black people, for Democrats when compared to Republicans. So I think a lot of the complaints from some of the black staffers in particular are very, very alarming. You have a lot of black staffers who are leaving Capitol Hill, particularly some of the older ones who are getting better jobs in the private sector, more money. I get it. God bless Kurt for working there for 10 years. It's the reason why I never worked on Capitol Hill is Atlanta, because the money doesn't, they don't pay well. And I like money, so I never decided to take the job. But I do <laughs> think you should pay people for their knowledge, for their experience, for the work that they're doing. And the reality is, and Kurt, you know this very well, those members aren't writing the bills. They're not reading through the legislation. It's those staffers who are spending hours and hours yeah. writing that stuff, doing the research, and putting together mm -hmm. briefing documents to brief those members so they have talking points, Z, to come on shows like yours. Pay the people what they're worth. <laughs> I know you like money, Sir Michael. Anybody who's seen your, your outfits knows you like money. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so, and this but piano, one of the things too. is to follow... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Kurt, you're well-dressed as well. No shade, but I'm just saying. Kurt Michael, he wears expensive clothes, uh, is the inside I'm joke. I'm not in his league. Um, sure, Michael, just, just to follow up on the point about low, low pay, I mean, speak mm -hmm. to how that impacts the ability of staffer of, of color to even take this job in the first instance, because we talk about income inequality all the time. Mm -hmm. But sure, Michael, also that they're not being promoted to jobs which maybe they could make right. a living wage. 
No, that's a really, really good point. I mean, first of all, living in D.C. is expensive as heck. I mean, you're talking about an average rent mm-hmm. of one bedroom is maybe about 2000 to $2,500. And I'm probably being generous with those numbers. You're also talking about a lot of black recent college graduates who graduate from HBCUs, which are typically very expensive. They're usually the first in their families to graduate. They're trying to also pay down student loans, pay for rent, pay for a car if they can even afford it, pay for health insurance if they want private health insurance versus what they're given from the government because of their jobs. I mean, Zerlina, the reality is it's an environment that is just not beneficial for black recent college graduates who may want to make a difference in their communities back home because they realize that people are struggling, because they realize that they need people to provide better resources by better um, better um, telling members this is legislation that you should support versus legislation that they shouldn't support. And so, again, I think it's a toxic environment that is not conducive for black people who may want to make a difference in this country. And that has to change. And Zerlina, really quickly, that's not about being a Republican or a Democrat. That's about treating people fairly. Yeah. I don't think this is a partisan mm-hmm. issue. Mm-hmm. So, Kurt, to that point, I mean, what do we do to actually get congressional staff that reflects the diversity of the country? We talk a lot about getting people who are elected that look like the country, but certainly the people who work on Capitol Hill need to look like the country. Well, that's why I think this unionization effort is so important, because that's part of at the heart of why they're saying this needs to happen, that there needs to be a concerted effort for retention, for diversity, for inclusiveness, for meritocracy. And that, that I think getting to that point starts with this type of organization. It starts with staffers actually being able to come together and have a voice and to take back some of the power. At the heart of this issue has always been there's been an imbalance of power. If you're a junior staffer just out of college making $28,000 a year and working 60 hours a week, if something isn't right in your office and you complain, you get labeled a troublemaker. You get labeled difficult to work with. You can't get another job after that one. And then your career is pretty much over. So people stay silent. People stay quiet. They keep it to themselves. And the problems continue to fester. That's been the culture on Capitol Hill since the beginning of Capitol Hill. And in order to break that cycle, staffers have got to have a place where they can come together, centralize, have the power back, create safeguards in place where they can go with complaints. They can go and have a legitimate process that treats them with dignity, respect, and actually respects outcomes. And I think that's why we're having this unionization effort right now. Hi, I'm Zerlina Maxwell. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more from Zerlina by clicking any of the videos on this screen and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thanks for watching.